Hello. Uh, let's get right into it. I don't know where this week went, but there's a lot of stuff to cover. If you're listening to this on Friday, when I released it, I think first and foremost, the most important thing to mention is if you're looking to connect with the Portland startup community, maybe you're looking to meet new people, maybe you're looking to meet people who've been here for a while and know more about Portland and what's going on here and maybe previous tech companies or whatever, there's an event <laughs> occurring Friday at four at the Rogue East Side Brewery that uh, is a throwback to events that used to happen in Portland. Now, the name is not important because I don't want to dissuade you from attending this event. I will link it up below so that you have all the details and know how to get there. But 4 p.m. September 20th, if you want to connect in real life with people from the Portland startup community, I suggest you go to this event. It's Friday. You've worked hard all week. Like, I don't know where the week went. I've been working hard all week. By 4 p.m. on Friday, you, you deserve a little break. You deserve to hang out with other people from the Portland startup community. And so we kind of threw this event together at the last minute because WordCamp US has been in town all week. If you're not familiar with WordCamp uh, or, or WordCamp US at that, WordCamps are these gatherings that people who work on WordPress or within the WordPress ecosystem, you know, the CMS blogging platform. They have uh, regular WordCamps that are kind of regional, and WordCamp US is the, the largest gathering of WordPress folks in the United States, if not the world. And they're here in Portland this week. Lots of awesome people here. And, you know, so many people were like, oh, we should meet up. We should, we should connect. Or do you have time to meet? That we just decided, like, let's just do an event. Let's get people, let's get the Portland startup community together. And let's invite the WordCamp folks so that everybody can connect, which is what we used to do back in the day. But I'm not going to waste your time with that. I will do the history later at the end. If you're interested in A, what the name of this event is and B, why the heck it has that name and where it came from, I will cover that later. But let's get on to other things. I think the other important thing to note is you can go to this event <laughs> at 4 p.m. And uh, there are two things you can do after. If you're a WordCamp US attendee, a ticketed attendee, after you go hang out at Rogue, you can go to OMSI, where the WordCamp US after party will be held. If you're looking for something else to do, you know, it's Friday and you, you want to like relax a little bit. The Upstart Collective second birthday party is also occurring that evening down at Olympic Mills. And the the nice thing about this is Rogue is up on like 9th or something in the east side. But uh, OMSI is just like right there, like walkable. And then uh, Upstart Collective is right there and walkable. So come on down to Rogue, hang out with the community, kind of get your energy going and then then go to the bigger parties and hang out with other people we'd love to see you there uh i will be there i don't know how long i will be there but i will be there and uh probably out on the patio if the weather cooperates and would love to see you there so come hang out come say hi at rogue 4 p.m september 20th and then upstart second birthday after or wordcamp us closing party after and more on the history of this whole thing later as well as the reveal of what it's called because i worry these days that the name kind of scares people away honestly are you interested in keeping up with the latest and greatest in the portland startup community but also getting these random historical tangents about the portland startup community of yesteryear you should subscribe i'll be happy to tell you about that stuff every single week on to more meetups. So one of the pieces of feedback I've heard from any number of folks in the Portland startup community is like, does everything have to be a happy hour? Does everything have to happen in the, the evening? And so it's really nice to see people programming events that speak to that need in our community. And there are two events that I would like to highlight in that regard. They are centered around coffee. So as I always like to say, 
why organize around a depressant when you can organize around a stimulant? So two events, uh, cafedev.org, which is a new event that is like a co-working peer-to-peer event that will happen every Monday and Wednesday, every week. They're just planning to like, we're going to meet up at this coffee shop. And if you want to work and code here and maybe meet some other people, come to cafedev.org. And then of course, there's the classic founder.coffee, which has been around for a while. Generally happens on Tuesdays, I believe in the morning, but it bounces around to different coffee shops once a month. Uh, the other nice thing about Founder Coffee is it not only happens in Portland, it now happens in Bend. So if you're in Central Oregon, you have a Founder Coffee of your own. If you're in Portland, you can keep an eye on the Founder Coffee. And then also don't forget, uh, I don't think I included this in the blog post, but you know, my brain processes slowly. So I just remembered that <laughs> there's also... Uh, coffee conversations in the Couve. So if you are on the north side of the Columbia River, or maybe you're in North Portland and getting to Vancouver is super easy, there's also a coffee meetup in Vancouver for folks that, uh, that want to meet at a different time of day and meet around coffee and not have alcohol be involved with what's going on. So that's that. And I, I encourage you to attend those events and, and provide feedback to me about how they are. And, and if you would like to schedule another event, maybe a lunchtime event or another coffee event, please let me know so I can let other people know. Because again, while a lot of folks are fine with the happy hour evening events, people are parents, they've got kids, they've got sports, they've got other things they want to do. They, you know, doesn't doesn't always have to be a happy hour. So that is a thing. Uh, but let me know if you're scheduling those things so I can so I can promote those. To other folks okay the the big news this week and again need to open up my browser so that i can read these off to you so i get it right uh the oregon unmanned aerial system accelerator the inaugural class just had their demo day kind of in conjunction with the Pendleton Roundup, which if you don't know the Pendleton Roundup, it's one of the most famous rodeos in the world. And it occurs right here in Oregon, in Pendleton. And uh, so what the what the drone accelerator, the UAS accelerator decided to do is they're like, if we have this massive event in town, why don't we couple our demo day with it. And so they did. So a bunch of Portland people showed up there, a bunch of investors, the startups got to pitch basically their graduation ceremony from the Oregon UAS accelerator program. And so I just wanted to, in case you didn't remember who was involved, I wanted to take a few minutes and just kind of read their names and, and what they do. And if it sounds interesting to you, I hope you check out what these drone companies are doing and support them in their life post accelerator. So here's the list. Advanced Drone, which is specializing in agricultural UAS operations for herbicide application, aerial industries out of Singapore, which is developing scalable autonomous UAS for agriculture and delivery, Cypra Autonomy, which is pioneering voice control solutions for autonomous vehicles, Phoenix Solutions, which is a veteran-owned company focused on heavy lift UAS for cargo transport and firefighting. Range Air, innovating airborne broadband solutions for public safety. Zephyr Flight Labs, which was the judge's overall winner, and that's something uh, that's something else that makes this this demo day a little bit unique, is that there's judging that goes on. So it's not just a typical show up, tell your story maybe make, make some connections. This is an M&A that has a, has a little bit of competitive nature to it. So Zephyr Flight Labs was the judge's overall winner. They manufactured the Z-Scan system, enhancing drone safety by providing real-time identification of drones and operators. And the People's Choice Award, the final company was Zing Drone Solutions. They're enhancing safety and compliance in drone operations. Uh, so yeah, so that's the first class, the inaugural class. I'm going to catch up with the the person in charge of the accelerator, Joseph Wayno, in a couple weeks or in a week or something. And so if I, anything, if I have anything else 
to report about that. I will let you know as soon as I've had the chance to catch up with him. Cool. Next up, Catherine Latham, who is very active in the Portland startup Slack. I love that she shows up there and, and engages with folks. If you're not on the Portland startup Slack, you should join 7,000 of your soon to be closest friends on the Portland startup Slack. It's really just a Slack instance for the Portland startup community to interact with one another and meet people and connect and, and all those kind of things. And Catherine, very active on there, always participatory and, and thank you. Catherine for doing that work and taking that time. She recently attended the annual meeting of the Portland Alternative Investment Association. I had to read that off because I didn't want to get those words in the wrong order. It's the PAIA. And uh, basically what they talk about is like what's going on in the Portland investment scene and the broader Oregon investment scene in terms of venture capital or other alternative investment things. And she brought up a really nice recap. I will link it up about her top five takeaways. And really, uh, I think what was most important was just her encouragement for startup founders, especially startup founders who are interested in pursuing venture capital, why they should engage with this organization and paying attention to what they're what they're saying. So if you match that persona, if you are a startup founder who is like, I'm building a venture scale thing, I need an equity based investment sort of thing to make my company work. I want to go after venture capital. Maybe follow Catherine's advice and check out the I'm going to have to read it again because I keep twisting it. Uh, Portland Alternative Investment Association and uh, it's a membership organization, so you can pay for a membership. I believe they have individual memberships as well as company memberships, but could be worth your while just to keep not not that you're going to pitch there. You're not going to pitch anybody. You're probably not going to like land an investment. This is more for you to have a better understanding of what is going on in the ecosystem, where the opportunities are, where the things to avoid are. Just it's educational for you as a startup founder. So please consider it. Cool. So we've got the we've got the parties, we've got the coffee, we've got the education. What about your physical health? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's why I want to highlight the 4K for a community run that's coming up next Wednesday. It's a regular event that is held uh, here in Portland, organized by Field Day, which is a platform for nonprofits and, and people to engage in community efforts like this. Uh, 4K for 4K for community. God, I cannot talk today. 4K for community started off as the 4K fun run way back when uh, when when Elemental started it. They might have been already acquired by Amazon at that point, AWS Elemental. But anyway, community fun run they put together, bring the tech community together for a good cause, give money to charity, get people out in the fresh air and exercising and all that kind of thing. So if that sounds like your jam, you want to check out 4K for community, the fun run. I don't know if you can still register this late, but maybe maybe just go out, check it out, cheer people on. You know, they're running. Running is not fun. I don't care if you call it a fun run. Running is not fun. So they, they could probably use some you know, some encouragement from the crowd. So if that's something that sounds like fun to you, head on out to the 4K4 community run. Of course, I'll link it up so you have all the details and, and maybe you can still register. I honestly don't know what the deadline is. I just know it's happening next week. And I know last time it was raining really hard. I hopefully, hopefully it's not raining this time, but the Portland people show up. We, we don't, a little rain, not going to scare us away. A run scares me away, but other people, they like the running. So check that out. If that sounds interesting to you, it's always another good way to engage with the Portland tech community and the startup community in a way that uh, is, is a little more healthy than maybe, you know, the happy hours or even the coffee. It's, it's natural kind of adrenaline based fun. So, uh, <laughs> or came for a community. Hope to see you there. 
Okay, final news story before we get into the the history lesson about the the Portland startup community. <laughs> if you choose to stay, I would imagine like the vast majority of you are gone already, which is why I feel comfortable talking about this. Uh, I, I'm moderating a panel on Tuesday of next week. Uh, hosted by Rose City Techies. They were kind enough to invite me to moderate a panel of founders just to talk about the startup community. Here in Portland, it'll be held in Kiln. Uh, it was getting close to, to capacity, so maybe there's still seats available. I would love to see you there. Excited might not be the right adjective, but uh, I, I always love getting the chance to talk with founders. I'm just really rusty. Like I haven't, I haven't moderated something in a while. I love moderating. Don't get me wrong. When they asked, I was humbled. I was floored. I was like, yes, I will absolutely do that. And then my brain actually kicked in and was like, dude, you haven't moderated a panel in a long time. And so a little nervous, a little shaky. But, but hoping you'll show up, not so much for me, but for the amazing founders who I'll have the chance to, to talk to on stage and the amazing growing brand new-ish, they've got some things going on, Rose City Techies group. Uh, I'm just really happy that there's a new group with some new energy and new momentum that is working to bring the community together and get you connected to the people you need to know Rose City Techies, Tuesday, moderating the panel, Kiln. Come hang out. All right. None of you are here. Well, you're still here. Look at you. Thank you for staying for this little Portland startup community history lesson, as it were. Uh, okay, so at the top, I was saying we're having this gathering. Didn't want to reveal the name, but since you're here, and you seem somewhat interested, or maybe you just simply don't know how to pause the video or leave. Uh, cool. Just hang out. Just uh, stick with it. Uh, <laughs> the name of the event is Beer and Blog. Now, caveat, you do not need to drink beer or any alcoholic beverage to attend this event. You do not need to blog or have a blog that you haven't updated or even... You don't even need to have thought about blogging ever in the history of your entire life. Beer and Blog, <laughs> the name originated, there's a guy in town, his name was Justin Kistner, and there was a group of us who were installing our own WordPress instances back in the day. Like, this is 17 years ago, maybe, that, um, you know, we were all working on WordPress and there was a handful of us and and Justin was very public about like oh I'm working on WordPress stuff and here are tips and tricks and that that kind of thing and so a lot of us would gravitate to him and say uh, Kissner can you help me can you help me with my install and enough of us started bugging him that he's like look I can't deal with all of you individually why don't we all show up at the lucky lab at four o'clock on Friday, and we as a group will work on our blogs, or maybe I'll show up if I've found a new plugin, I can share it with you, or maybe we'll do tips and tricks, sharing, show and tell. So that's where it started. So it was just a small group of us that would show up regularly. And then I don't know what happened. Like, it's not like it was a secret. It wasn't designed <laughs> to be a secret. But like little by little, you know, people would tell other people and and more people would show up. And then and then, you know, we'd kind of get some blog stuff done, but we'd really just wind up talking and like socializing. And then more people would show up. And then people who were like, oh, I'm doing Twitter and social media stuff. I don't even do blogging, but this is interesting and this is a good community. And it just kept growing and growing and growing. And yet because of the origin story, it retained this name, Beer and Blog. And that just kind of stuck. And people would be like, oh, you're going to Beer and Blog? It happens every Friday. And so uh, it really gave locals kind of this anchor point at a really important time to show up, meet with other folks in the community, and really get engaged uh, and, and would bring in new people every time. No agenda, just a bunch of people sitting around being like, yeah, I'm in the Portland tech 
community, or I'm in the Portland open source community, or I'm in the Portland startup community, and just really connecting those dots for our community. Uh, eventually, it, like I literally, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here. Hundreds of people every Friday would show up for this event. Now they wouldn't all be there at once, but it would cycle through 100, 200, depending on the weather, 300, 400 people. And we were like, this is crazy. This is like the best place every week to meet the people in Portland that you want to meet, you need to meet, you've been meaning to meet, you saw on Twitter and you're like, I wish I could talk to that person. Like that was what Beer and Blog became. We no longer talked about blogs ever, but, uh, but then the other thing that started to happen and why WordCamp US inspired us to do a quick reboot, little reunion, little beer and blog redux is because we realized that if somebody new was coming to town, if somebody was in town for an event like OSCON or whatever, and they could manage to stay until Saturday, we would be like, you should come to Beer and Blog. Come to Beer and Blog on Friday. You'll meet everybody in the community. You'll see what's going on in Portland. You'll either learn about Portland or maybe you'll be so excited that you'll decide to move here. Or if you're thinking about moving here, here's kind of a safe space, soft landing pad for you to start making your connections in the community. So it became that almost like welcome wagon activity where we would, we would sincerely say, make sure and stay Friday evening because you need to go to beer and blog. You'll meet everybody you need to know in town and you'll feel super connected and welcomed and all that kind of thing. So because of that, beer and blog has a very nostalgic and happy place in my heart and me saying this as an introvert that's a big deal so forgive me if i get a little nostalgic about this weirdly named event that is that is nonsensical <laughs> in this day and age but it, but it was really important to me and a lot of people in the community back then and it was important to the community at large so beer and blog that's that's the history. Thank you, Justin Kistner, for putting up with all of us very, very early on and helping all of us with our WordPress installs. And thank you to everyone who made Beer and Blog the magical thing that it was. We don't need to reboot it. Like if people want to do something else similar, if they want to take Beer and Blog as inspiration and, and maybe do something else-ish, great. Please do. But please don't. Please don't ask us to re reboot it. It's done. It worked. For a moment in time, Beer and Blog was magical. I don't know that we should even try to rekindle that magic. It worked because it worked and because of other things that were going on. And I really appreciated it. I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I tried to make it every single week um, because it was just that good. But we need new stuff. We need new people. We need new ideas. Doing that same work of community building, but doesn't need to be beer and blog beer and blog is done except for the reunions you know it's like high school or college like high school is done college is done but it's nice to revisit every once in a while and see the people that's what's happening beer and blog reunion why are you still here <laughs> beer and blog reunion september 20th four o'clock if you're in town for ward camp us come join us if you're wanting to get started on your your activities early in the evening come join us then go to the upstart collective second birthday party or the or camp us after party in omsi i don't care i don't care why you're there just come be there and and hang out with the community and we'll we'll see you there at rogue the east side brewery okay cool that's all i've got i feel like i babbled for a long time again but you know you're if you're if you're still here thank you like, honestly, thank you. I really appreciate you showing up week after week and listening to me babble. I hope some of this is valuable. I realize it's not all valuable. Like, I, I enjoy telling you about it, but I realize it's not all valuable. So thank you. Thank you sincerely for hanging out with me week after week and, uh, and listening to what's happening in the Portland startup community. I hope you're hanging in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, Please keep up the good work.